Our story opens with a mysterious scene in an unknown place, where two young children are running for their lives in a snow-covered landscape. Suddenly, they are attacked by gunfire in both falls, letting go of each other's hands. This is set in a time when there is only one superpower, the Holy Britannian Empire, which once ruled a third of the world. However, it collapsed with its 99th emperor, Lelouch VI Britannia, and its history seemed destined to end. The empire fragmented into several countries, but a great leader named Schneezel El Britannia managed to control the majority of the states. To strengthen his nation, he initiated the Kawa period, year 3, during which a faction of Britannian forces declared war on the United States of Japan. Through a surprise attack, he successfully established the Neo-Britannian Empire, marking the start of his reign. However, life in Japan became bleak, with its people living in darkness. Two brothers, on a mission in Area 11, search for their targets. A boy named Gran cruelly shoots and kills a Japanese boy, and when the victim's wife tries to protest, another boy named Greet murders her as well. They continue their massacre, killing many others simply because they are Japanese, intending to eliminate them from the world. They justify this brutality by asserting their dominance as rulers and victors, refusing to grant even a basic right to a peaceful life. Later, the brothers go to a station to refuel and recharge their batteries, where they witness the station's supervisor humiliating a Japanese girl. One of the brothers intervenes, stopping the beating, and the situation nearly escalates. The the other brother quickly takes the supervisor inside, then returns, talking kindly to the girl, and resolves the matter without further conflict. The Japanese girl thanks them. Meanwhile, an association discusses these two brothers, noting that they work for the survival of the Japanese but that little is known about them aside from the fact that they are brothers, Britannians, and likely want to join the cause. On their way, the brothers find some cats near a river and decide to provide them shelter. They go to a theater where they meet a girl who invites them to watch a special movie. The girl recognizes them and introduces herself as Black Cat. The brothers introduce themselves as Ash and Rose. They enter the theater, where Black Cat introduces them to Greed and Gran, who are captains of the Territory Nightmare Frame Combat Force and pretend to be on a serious mission. However, these are double-faced individuals who murder Japanese people for no reason other than for fun. Black Cat's family was also killed by them, and she wants Ash and Rose to join her team to capture these murderers. They agree although capturing them is no easy task. Meanwhile, Gran and Greed discover something strange within their units a box opens, revealing Ash and Rose, who introduce themselves as members of the Kirkwain security force. They call themselves the Nameless Mercenaries and declare that Gran and Greed's time is over, vowing to avenge the innocent Japanese citizens. Gran and Greed recognize them, and a battle ensues. Ash attacks with expert precision, leaving Black Cat in awe. He and Rose work according to plan, with Rose successfully reaching his target. After eliminating all the guards, he tells Greed the game is over. He challenges Greed to a strategy game using Nightmare Frame chess pieces, with the promise that, if he wins, he will allow them to leave. They start the game, playing fiercely and matching each other's moves. However, the brothers are legends in battle. Ash shifts into a mysterious combat mode, defeating everyone with a single strike, leaving only Gran alive. Terrified, Gran resolves not to lose to an ordinary person and engages Ash in a final duel. Ash skillfully destroys Gran's system by driving a sword into it, winning the battle. Greed, in disbelief, tells Rose that this is unfair and demands to know who they truly are. Rose then reveals her true identity. She is Sakuya Sumareji. She explains that the girl in Abashiri prison is her friend, recalling how Greed and Gran were once relocated with her family to Hokkaido. However, they despised the Japanese and aided Neo-Britannia in attacking the land, hunting down Sakuya and her family, which led to their separation. Now, Sakuya tells them they will pay back a hundredfold for the number of Japanese lives they took. Greed is about to resist but is too afraid of death. With the mission over, Rose tells Black Cat that they know her real identity, Haruka Rutaka, leader of Hokkaido's largest resistance group, the Shining Star. She explains that this mission was merely a test to assess their capabilities, and now they are ready for their next mission, to Abashiri Prison, where Rose plans to rescue her best friend. Their next mission is decided, and they are all ready to sacrifice their lives for it, determined to do their best. A boy named Sir Arnold informs Commander Norland von Lundbelv about the former leader of the Japan Liberation Front's Imperial Guard, Kensei Kuroto, who was also the leader of the Shining Star. Arnold suspects that Japanese people might be causing them trouble, but Commander Norland dismisses this, believing the Japanese are insignificant and that the strength and worth of his forces will prevail. Arnold leaves, thinking he must take action, as the destruction of the Kirkwain unit cannot be overlooked. He vows to destroy all enemies defending the Japanese people. Meanwhile, Lady Catherine is having tea when she receives a message from Commander Norland. Ash and Rose discuss their mission to rescue Sakura from prison. They encourage each other, knowing the mission is not easy. Rose decides to accompany Ash this time because Ash is not trained to handle such a 
high-stakes mission involving advanced G4 weaponry. Rose has also worked hard for this day, and they both agree to activate the system and prepare to move. As they approach the Abashiri prison, the team detects strange and dangerous signals and activates all defense systems. On the other hand, Ash and Rose both launch their missiles, change positions to avoid counterattacks, and continue advancing. Ash wakes up Rose, and they stick to their plan. Rose enters the control room, uses his power and magic on the in-charge officer, and orders the release of all prisoners. The locks open automatically, and everyone starts running out. Finally, Rose meets his best friend, Sakura and they are overjoyed to see each other. There is no greater blessing than seeing a loved one safe. They hug and thank each other for risking their lives to ensure each other's safety, reminiscing about their childhood when they always helped each other. At that moment, Commander Norland arrives with a message that Lady Catherine is coming to transport Sakura, Rose's best friend, to a new location. Everything is going smoothly with the other members of the Shining Star, who are completing their tasks, but Arnold arrives and orders his companions to destroy all enemies. A gymnastic fight breaks out that seems endless, with no clear winner. Sakura tries to escape, but Lady Catherine arrives, causing chaos and attacking Sakura. Rose rushes to save her but fails, and even Commander Norland cannot protect her. Rose is devastated, determined not to fail again, especially with his best friend in danger. Meanwhile, Lady Catherine instructs the team to return as she captures Sakura. However, Arnold wants to destroy all members of the Shining Star. Sakuya meets with her Imperial Guard, Kensei Kuroto, who appreciates her loyalty and thanks him for his service to her and her family. She asks for his help in rescuing Sakura and protecting her people, and he agrees. The situation with the Shining Star members is deteriorating, and they are trying to escape. Fortunately, Kuroto joins them and starts helping. Rose informs Ash about everything and asks for an update. Ash reveals that he and Arnold are about to face off in battle. They both give each other a tough fight. Arnold breaks Ash's gun and mocks him, but Ash takes it seriously, transforms his weapon, and fights back like a pro. Ash attacks Arnold and manages to defeat him, though Arnold is unwilling to accept it. At night, Ash and Rose reflect on the day's events. It was a success, they saved many lives and are now focused on rescuing Sakura, who is being taken to the Neo-Britannia government capital headquarters. Afterward, Rose uses her magic on Ash and asks him about his favorite person. Ash, caught off guard, admits it's only Rose, and Rose smiles at his response. Ash is a true person with Rose, but Rose is a two-faced person. She is just using him as a helper, and after completing her work and saving her friend, she decides to kill him. That is such terrible thinking, but that's what she had in mind. The Neo-Britannia government ordered all its officers to be vigilant and pay attention to the enemies, as they have destroyed many units. The situation is worsening, especially since Kuroto now leads the Shining Stars, who are indeed shining like stars. This serves as a reminder to the government to destroy them completely. They still cannot identify who is behind this strong team that operates so recklessly. On the other hand, a Neo-Britannia government officer gathers information about the members of the Shining Stars after being rescued from the last event. His name is Heath. He shared everything with them but he was traumatized by the event. His companions didn't comfort him, and instead, they pressured him to the point of committing suicide. While the officers were moving, they spotted a beautiful girl who was the daughter of the Luxembourg family. She works as Princess Sherry's aide and is a central figure within the administration. She is a distinguished personality, quite different from others. Meanwhile, the members of Shining Star are relaxing and praising Rose and Ash for their impressive work. Rose is resting and sleeping in his room in a very feminine way, while Ash is exercising and doing more traditionally masculine activities. Rose receives a message that a girl named Natalia has come to the cafe, and she prepares to meet her. During their meeting, Rose uses her magic on Natalia to get honest answers to her questions. After being served tea, Rose asks Natalia about Sakura, but unfortunately, Natalia doesn't know much about her and cannot determine her location. The Neo-Britannia government has taken this matter very seriously and has decided not to publish anything about it. Afterward, they engage in some casual conversation. Natalia suggests that Rose try something new to change her routine and gives her a dress to help her change her style and enjoy herself freely. Meanwhile, Ash is on his way home after grocery shopping when he saves a Japanese girl from some boys. The girl thanks him. Rose wears the dress but feels weird in her outfit, thinking she doesn't look good. The Japanese girl, who was saved by Ash, arrives at the cafe with him and introduces him to everyone. Ash sees Rose but doesn't recognize her. Rose decides to act normal since Ash is staring at her. She she asks if he would like coffee and serves him. They start talking about random topics like cooking and his love for animals. Rose is puzzled by his friendly conversation and decides to respond freely. Ash seems to be taking a liking to her, as he keeps asking for more coffee just to continue talking with her. Later, Natalia meets a little boy who is afraid of people and wants to go out but is too scared. Natalia convinces him to visit the cafe 
which she opens just for him. The boy agrees and is happy. Meanwhile, Ash drinks 10 cups of coffee just to keep talking to Rose. He's not a bad guy, but he can't forget that he once killed Yugo Sumeragi, a member of her family. Afterward, he heads home and also receives permission to return. Lady Catherine meets Sakura and informs her that she is her personal knight since Sakura is weak and needs protection. Although Lady Catherine doesn't want this assignment, she has no choice as it is in order. She advises Sakura not to do anything that would put her in harm's way and leaves. Sakura decides not to act recklessly because Sakuya's protection and life are at stake. Meanwhile, the Neo-Britannia government officers make significant progress in their efforts to fight their enemies. Natalia asks Rose about her day, and Rose shares that she enjoyed herself and looks forward to returning to the cafe soon. The members of Shining Star return to their work and have developed new advanced units and systems with greater destructive power. They are eager to use them and completely defeat their enemies. Later that night, Ash and Rose discuss their day's activities when, suddenly, Ash confesses that he is in love. Rose is shocked, but before she can respond, a sudden announcement from the Imperial Palace startles them both, the 100th Emperor, Kallus Al Britannia, has passed away, and Sakuya Sumeragi will ascend the throne as the 101st Emperor. Now comment what will happen next. Is Rose able to save her best friend Sakura or not? Why her behavior is mysterious toward Ash as even Ash is a good person who helps her in a good way. Ash even likes her feminine look. But why does she have the desire to kill him? Why is he just using him for her purpose? Is it right to use a person just for your work and then kill him? Please subscribe to our channel for the next part.